Let's say you're super excited for the all-new Toyota Innova Xenix, but you don't like hybrid cars for whatever reason. Well, dude, pare, you're in luck. Because aside from the usual diesel-fed Innovas that will continue to be available here in the Philippines, well, we have this, the Toyota Innova Xenix 2.0 V CVT. Now, in this video, we will find out what this gasoline-powered Innova Xenix has to offer. Let's do this. Toyota has launched the all-new Xenix, an MPV meant to join the ranks of Toyota's electrified hybrid vehicles. It's a game-changer in the MPV class because of all the tech and features that they threw at it. But we all know that there's a bunch of conservative Toyota fans out there who are still apprehensive about this new fangled hybrid tech that Toyota introduced 25 years ago. For these people, Toyota gave us this, the Innova Xenix V 2-liter CVT. It's not only powered by a conventional gasoline engine, it is also much more affordable than the top-spec Xenix Hybrid. Coming in at 1,670,000 Philippine Pesos, the Xenix V has a friendlier price point but comes with almost all the features of the Xenix Hybrid. So, what exactly can this new Xenix offer to us? But before we find out, special thanks to Toyota Pasong Tamo for providing the Xenix V to do this car feature. Here at Reagan's Rides, we do car reviews of SUVs, sports cars, trucks, and everything in between. So subscribe and hit the bell. Now, I'm not sure why anybody would be afraid of uh, hybrid cars, especially hybrid cars that come from Toyota. You see, pare, it's well known that Toyota is known for their reliability and I'm pretty sure that also extends to their hybrid vehicles. Now, if you were to ask me, I believe that the, the bigger reason why some people will still go for the Xenix V gasoline trim over the Xenix Hybrid uh, is uh, more of a matter of cost. You see, the Xenix Hybrid uh, retails for almost 2 million Philippine pesos, which pare is uh, pretty expensive for an MPV. Now, this Xenix V that we have here at 1.6 million pesos and change is an easier price to swallow. Now, thankfully, for that amount of money, well, you still get almost the same front fascia here as the Xenix Hybrid. Now, I did say it's almost the same because we don't get the matte aluminum chrome bits here on the front bumper and we also lose that LED DRL. However, aside from that, we still get the same SUV-like front grille here and the same full LED headlight units. The side profile gets some minor differences versus the top-spec Xenix Hybrid. Now, of course, we lose out on the hybrid badge found on the front fender, so that means that you're still covered by number coding. Unless you buy a hybrid badge from Lazada, Pero pare, please lang, don't do it, okay? Don't be an apple, don't do it. Now aside from that, well, we also have uh, body color door handles here versus the chrome of the Xenix Hybrid. And we also don't have the plastic claddings on the fender, um, making this Xenix V look really more like an MPV rather than a hopped up crossover. Now, we also have smaller 17-inch alloy wheels here versus the 18s of the Xenix Hybrid. But thankfully, well, the mechanical bits behind those wheels remain the same. So that means that this Xenix V still gets four-wheel disc brakes. And for the suspension, we have a MacPherson front suspension and a torsion beam at the back. Now, the ground clearance is still at 185 millimeters which is the same as the Xenix Hybrid. 
The Innova Zenix V is powered by a conventional 2-liter 4-cylinder naturally aspirated gasoline engine that can still put out 172 horsepower and 205 Newton meters of torque. Now, pare, this Innova Zenix doesn't drive the rear wheels anymore. Rather, it's now a front wheel drive and the power is sent to the front wheels via a CVT transmission. Now, some of you out there will ask, well, I don't like gasoline. Give me an Innova Zenix in diesel. Well, pare, unfortunately, you can't have that because the Zenix is either in gasoline or hybrid format. But if you still want an Innova diesel, well, as I said at the start of the video, the Toyota Innova diesel will continue to be available here in the Philippines. So that just goes to show that Toyota Philippines, well, thinks of everyone. The Zenix V's cockpit receives a few cuts here and there uh, to lower the cost versus the top spec Zenix hybrid. For one, we don't get leather seats here. Uh, instead, we only have these two-tone fabric seats. Pero pare, to its credit, these fabric seats offer a good amount of support and are pretty comfortable. Now, unfortunately, we don't get the power driver seat here. We only have manual adjustments for both the front seats. Uh, but um, honestly, it's not really a big deal for me. Now, thankfully, we do get the other niceties that is available to the Zenix Hybrid. Like, take for example, the leather wrap steering wheel here. And this steering wheel also adjusts for tilt and telescoping. And we also have the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. Plus, we have that partial digital gauge cluster that is in the same format as the Zenix Hybrid, although we get a traditional tachometer there instead of the hybrid power gauges. Of course, this is not a hybrid anyway. Now, we also have yeah, the same 10.1-inch touchscreen infotainment system here that still comes with wireless Apple CarPlay. Thank you. We also have Android Auto here, but we don't get the 360-degree view camera image. Instead, we only get a reverse camera there, so yeah, there's that. Now, another cut here is the fact that this uh, Zenix V doesn't get Toyota Safety Sense. Uh, instead, we only get, as you're seeing on your screen, we're only getting yeah, all of these passive safety bits. Now, that would have been alright, except for the fact that we only get dual airbags there. And uh, yeah, that kind of bummed me out because at its price level of over 1.6 million pesos, Pare, I would expect at least six airbags in this Zenix V, but we don't get that. Now we also have, uh, yeah, we also have this uh, automatic climate control system there. We have the same layout for your shifter, and we also have the same electronic park brake with an auto hold button right there. Now we still have a USB-C uh, charge port as well as a USB-A and we have a couple of cup holders here that as you can see easily passes my clean canteen test. Now pare, aside from that, well we still have a center armrest here and we still get that same two-tone uh, soft touch material found on the middle dashboard, on the door cards and yeah this makes this Innova Zenix V uh, quite a pleasant place uh, to spend some time in. While the Zenix V gets the same captain's chairs found in the Zenix Hybrid uh, for the second row, well, we do miss out on the Ottoman. So you can't really put your legs up here when you're sitting on the second row of the Zenix V. And we also lose out on that power recline function of the top spec Zenix Hybrid. Still, pare, these are really good captain's chairs here. We still get that mini table in the middle that comes with a pair of cup holders where you can still put your clean canteen. It fits that. And we still get the same amenities as found in the Zenix Hybrid. Uh, that means that we have these ambient lights here up top. We have the ceiling mounted AC vents there with its own blower control function right here in the middle. Plus we get a pair of USB type C charging ports. Now let's check out the third row seats to see what sort of space we can expect 
from the Innova Zenix V. One of the core advantages of the Innova Zenix is the fact that it is now a front-wheel drive unibody MPV. Now, why is it an advantage? Well, that just means that we get a ton of space here in the third row seats. Now, pare, let me show you. You see, the captain's chairs here are adjusted to a point that they, the people sitting there would have like close to a foot's worth of legroom. That's 12 inches, so they're going to be very comfortable. But even with that kind of legroom for the second row passengers, I still get an inch of knee room here and around 4 inches of headroom. Now granted, I am just a 5'6 dude, so I'm just an average Asian, but that tells a lot. That tells that these, uh, these third row seats would be super comfortable even if you sit here on a long drive. Now, this Innova Zenix is also marketed as a 7-seater because despite the fact that we have second row captain's chairs there, well, you can still put three people here in the third row seats. Now, granted, if you do that, it's going to be a bit tight, but at least you know that it is perfectly doable. Now, aside from that, we also get a pair of cup holders here at the back. We have a tiny cubby where you can store your smartphone, and we also have a 12-volt charging outlet in case you need to charge that said smartphone. The rear end of the Zenix V retains the LED taillight units that we also saw in the Zenix Hybrid. And we also get a power lift gate here, which my friends is a pleasant surprise. Now, when you pop open that power lift gate, you'll notice that we now have third row seats that fold flat to the floor, which translates to a ton of cargo space for the Zenix V. Now, as you can see, pare, we can easily fit like five to six large sky travel luggage here, which is perfect for a long-term family vacation. Now, if you're looking for the spare tire of this vehicle, well, you can always find it underneath the car. For a little bit more than the Innova G Diesel Automatic, the Zenix V provides a more comfortable ride, a spacious cargo area, more tech and features, and cleaner emissions. It's for people who want an Innova that is more comfortable for the family, especially those with elderly passengers. And while it may not provide the same fuel efficiency as the Zenix Hybrid, well, it is still a big leap forward when it comes to looks and hopefully overall driving comfort. Thanks for watching.